Alright, week six, first week of bye weeks, let's get into the recap. Once again, for the second week in a row, I am so sorry to anyone that had to watch this game all the way through. Washington and Chicago fans, my prayers go out to you because this game was unwatchable on all levels. None of the players looked like they deserved to be on a competent NFL team's roster. The coaching was bad, the players were bad, the schemes were bad. Not one thing was redeeming about this game until like the last two minutes when it got mildly interesting. And this game was only closed because Washington sabotaged themselves with a missed kick. I would literally prefer the electric chair than to watch this game all the way through ever again. Uh, are the Giants good now? I feel like everyone around the NFL has just been making excuses for the Giants wins each and every game, and you could honestly make more excuses for this game. I mean, the Ravens absolutely threw at the end, but maybe it's time to give the Giants their credit. They play good, hard-nosed, strong football. I mean, Brian Dable is really the real deal, and Saquon Barkley, for as long as he can keep this up, will be able to carry the Giants as long as he doesn't go back to the infirmary where he's most well-known, but it's still looking good. And as for the Ravens, you might want to consider a McCaffrey trade. I mean, Kenyon Drake looked good today, but this offense needs some serious firepower. Once Mark Andrews is taken out of the play, Lamar just doesn't know what to do with the ball. And with the Bengals getting back to full power, the Ravens Ravens might have some trouble maybe squeaking into the playoffs. We'll see. That was a close one, Indianapolis. It looked like we were gonna get a repeat of week two, and the Jacksonville Jaguars were gonna come in and kick the ever-loving crap out of you again, but luckily Matt Ryan, the Iceman, looks like he's the real deal so far. Now, yes, this is still a team dealing with a ton of injuries, and it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, but you gotta give them credit where credit's due. They won the football game. That counts for something. I don't know. These teams are both trash. This could likely be a tank bull looking back on it in two months. Once again, Bill Belichick looks at his scouting report and sees a past disciple of his teachings, and he wanted blood. And Belichick, being the succubus he is, got it and much more. Jacoby Brissett couldn't do anything at all for the entire day. And Belichick's also led his defense to do what no other defense has done before this year, bottling up Nick Chubb completely. I still don't think the Patriots are gonna be good, but I do definitely think they're gonna be a thorn in a lot of good teams' foot. They could really ruin some seasons this year. God damn it, all I wanted was an Andy Dalton revenge game. Is that too much to ask for? The red squirt gun was no match for Shiesty, and that's kind of the basis of this entire game. For the second week in a row, the entire Saints wide receiver core was obliterated even more this time without Olave, they really didn't stand too much of a chance, but they fought hard and valiantly. And with Jamar Chase back to his old ways, the Bengals are maybe contenders again. So, everyone better watch out for them. Whoa, whoa, hey, 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 hey. Tom. What happened? You know, if you looked at the stat sheet, you would probably think the Bucks won this game by 30 if you take away the touchdowns, but they didn't. They lost by two to Kenny Pickett and Mitchell Trubisky. I I just don't understand. On paper, this Bucks team should probably be the best team in the entire league, maybe besides the Bills or the Eagles, but you cannot have hiccups like this against the Pittsburgh Steelers. We saw way too much Ryan suck up. This is a huge win for the Steelers. It keeps their delusional playoff hopes alive, but it's also a really good win for their culture. And for the Bucks, you better turn things around. What? Look, I've never seen a team, besides the 49ers from two years ago, have so many injuries piling up at one time, but still, it's the Falcons! Marcus Mariota and Drake London and their O-linemen beat you. This Falcons defense is really good, and maybe Jimmy Garoppolo isn't enough to be a game manager to take the 49ers to where they want to be, but... I, I just don't get it. Maybe the 49ers just lose to every bad team and beat every good team. I don't understand it, and I'm not gonna try to. Uh, how many games are gonna be like this this week? The New York Jets. The New York Football Jets go into Lambeau Field and beat the f out of Aaron Rodgers in his own backyard. What Twilight Zone realm are we living in? This man, Zach Wilson, was doing his best impression of Deshaun Kaiser throughout the entire game, but once again, the Packers special teams came up clutch. They got it done as usual. I was low on the Packers to start the year, but even this is surprising me. You better, better get your things together right now. And this wide receiver core is just not gonna do anything for Aaron Rodgers. And with Randall Cobb as safety blanket for the last 74 years going out, things might actually get dark for you Packers fans. Now the Vikings always have a few of these games a year. 
where Kirk Cousins and the rest of the Vikings offense just completely shut down for the entire game. But luckily, they somehow came out with the win in this one. If their defense can hold while their offense is uh, Kirk Cousins buffering, then they're really gonna be going places. But when it really mattered most, their talent came through and won the game for them. Good job, Vikings. You know, call me crazy, but I actually had a lot of hope in the Panthers in winning this game. Something about that after your coaches fire magic, I thought was gonna ignite in the Panthers. And I mean, I guess I was right. Robbie Anderson did his best Antonio Brown impression and imploded on the sideline, getting nicely escorted out of the stadium. The Rams did Ram stuff, and I'm hoping this game is just a good audition for Christian McCaffrey, and I pray that he gets traded to a competent team and maybe he can actually win some football games, but I doubt it. Gino's MVP terror continues. He wasn't as good in this game, or even close to that, in his past ones, but still, he got the win and that's all that matters. And even more importantly, in a game where DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett were basically ineffective, he was still able to use his other weapons at his disposal to effectively pick apart the Cardinals' defense. But the wait is up, Cardinals fans, because now your deranged hopes of playoff contention can continue to flourish, as you're now gonna get DeAndre Hopkins back for this Thursday night game and he better not disappoint, or else your season is over. <coughs> the heavyweight classic that everyone was waiting for, and to be honest, it did live up to the hype. Besides the Eagles, these two teams looked like the best in the NFL, and they looked evenly matched, each throwing haymakers at each other throughout the game. It was a phenomenal chess match between some of the best coaches and quarterbacks and skill position players in the NFL. And after getting the ball back near the end of the game, the Bills had to go down and score, which they did with way too much ease. As Josh Allen scored, he looked up at the clock and saw way, way too much time left. I'm sure when he walked over to the sidelines and sat on the bench, he was getting PTSD flashbacks galore. But this is not the same Bills team as last year. They got Von Miller, baby, and he was able to make a play to stutter Patrick Mahomes and make him make a rare interception that ended the game on the spot. Big win for you, Bills. That's huge, but you still gotta prove it in the playoffs. Um, uh, yeah, the Eagles are still really, really good. Philadelphia continues to prove that they have absolutely zero weak spots on their entire team, and the Cowboys, although their defense still looked unstoppable, they do need Dak Prescott back. Sorry, Cooper Rush, but, uh, you're just not the answer. These are two great teams, but one was just better, and like great teams do, they closed out a close game against an inferior opponent. This game was all I need to see to expect a Super Bowl run from you, Philly. Let's ride. I am sick and tired of seeing the Broncos on primetime. Seriously, who wants to watch them play? The first half wasn't horrible, but the second half was just unwashable. Nothing happened. After a slop fest of field goals and turnovers, finally, after a muffed punt in overtime, Justin Herbert led the Chargers on a monster three-play, seven-yard drive, resulting in a game-winning field goal by the injured Dustin Hopkins. Another Chargers win, but this team, for as talented and stacked as they are, a few different bounces would would make this Chargers team 1-5, so you should be grateful, very grateful that you have the record you do. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, then like and comment because it really helps the channel a lot. And if you like this video, then watch this video right here on the worst NFL moment from every single team. It's pretty good, trust me. Anyways, until next time.